Thank you all for coming out today. I really appreciate this. This is a larger turnout than what I expected. This is fantastic. Okay, I just want to give a huge thanks to our Timber Mesa Pipes and Drums and our Honor Guard guys. They're just fantastic. Everywhere they go, they do such a great job. So if we could give them a round of applause, I'd appreciate it. And of course, our, our Eagle Scout, TK Plum, um, he's been an integral part of this project. Uh, when we first started talking about construction out here, he wanted to, to come and, and uh, do his project. Of course, it's the flagpole. Uh, the Pierce family, as he's related to, had a lot of history with this, this land, this area in Linden, so we really appreciate that. We're going to go ahead and call TK up. We were going to have him speak outside, but it's just too stinking cold, so he's going to go ahead and speak inside. So, TK. All right. Um, first off, I want to thank Timber Mesa Fire for allowing me to do this. Give him a round of applause. Um, and all the people that helped me through my project, um, it was a good success. Um, I'm really grateful for the opportunity that I had to make my country proud. Um, the highest rank in Scouts is an Eagle, and it's such an honor for me to be able to accomplish that. So I'd like to thank Sholo Ford, Danny and Becky Seymour, um, Hatch Motor, Daryl Seymour, Farmers Insurance, Steve Williams, Billy Plum, Scott Cronin, um, Val Pogeline, Val Biggs, J.R. Pierce, Donette Kent, um, Gerald Pierce, Richie Davis, Horn Otto, Wendell and Ginger Allen, Lowell Pierce, um, Pam Derrick, Everlasting Monument, Standard Electric, and Perkins Cinders. Thank you. So my name is Randy Chevalier. I'm a deputy chief with Timber Mesa. And again, I, I really appreciate you guys all coming out and supporting us in this project. This project started about three years ago, uh, talking with our firefighters, talking with community members, uh, consultants, trying to figure out what the best thing to do with, with this, the station that was here. Um, it had a lot of history here. It wasn't necessarily a, a horrible site, horrible place, but it wasn't really conducive to what a full-time operation needs to, to support the community of Linden and, and support the rest of the fire district. So there's a lot of thought and, and things that went into play to, to try to try to bring a fire station in this area that truly met the need of the community and also met the need of our, of our firefighters. Um, when we think about a fire station, it's not necessarily just another building, another public facility out there. It's a, it's a location that needs to have some thought put into it. And uh, Perlman Architects, they, they've, they've designed, and Gerald, Gerald is here, he's our architect. Uh, I don't know how many stations, probably 50 plus stations uh, that they designed and, and built across Arizona. And uh, he's done ride-alongs with other facilities. He, he puts a lot of time and effort into trying to learn what the guys need to, to function. Um, the, the apparatus bay, the, the bay that we're sitting in right now, um, has a lot of features inside of it that help our firefighters from, from getting sick, getting cancer, and things like that. Cancer is a huge killer of firefighters, and we wanted to take that in consideration to our design. So inside this apparatus bay, if you just kind of look around a little bit, there's features in here with technology to help reduce those chances of, of cancer. We've got exhaust pipes up here where they're kind of flapping in the wind a little bit. We have an exhaust system over here that provides makeup air, so when this pulls the air through, when they start the trucks, it forces it all out and gives them clean air to breathe. We also built a turnout storage room over here off the side. That way we can have a place to keep our turnouts. When we go inside of a structure fire, there's the smoke, there's the plastics, there's the thing inside there that, that are going to stick to those turnouts, and we don't want to ingest that into our system. We don't want that on our skin. Um, and we want to give it a place where it can go off gas to go, go have its own space so our crews don't continue to get contaminated with that type of stuff. So again, there's a lot of things like that that we designed into the station to help reduce that risk. Um, inside, as you go through, and, and when we're done here, we'll, we'll have, you'll have an opportunity to walk through. You feel free to look in the cabinets, go in any room you want to check out, uh, ask any questions of any firefighter here, and I think they can give you a good answer about, about some thought processes that went into the station. But, Another thing, of course, we, we go to people's houses on a regular basis. Well, there might be some of your houses, and, and there's disease and there's sicknesses out there that we want to try not to bring into our home. And so you can see where we have sinks, hard surfaces that can be easily cleaned, so we're not trying to contaminate this space. 
Um, and then it just the pure format, the pure layout of this facility, um, easy access to the rear of the bay, to the rear of the fire trucks. Our guys have easy access going to the trucks so they can respond quickly. And this location is actually a fantastic location for a, for a fire department in Linden. It's got great response time to, to any piece of, of the Linden community. So I just want to tell thanks to, to Perlman and of course all the firefighters that kind of participate in that process to help with the design. You guys did a great job. Of course, Core Construction was selected to, to, uh, to build this facility. And again, Core, I don't know how many fire stations they've built, but there's been a number of them across the state. And they build in other states as well. And uh, I think they're the right guys for the job. Uh, they had a lot of heart and soul that put into it. And, and uh, they're probably tired of me, because I was out here every day. I live, I live in Linden, and I come here every day and work through the project with those guys. Um, but, but Steve, Steve's running around. I, I don't know where Steve is at, but Steve was our main superintendent on the job. And we had another guy named Milo. And Milo's a local resident, lives in Taylor. And uh, those two guys ran the day-to-day -day operations and they did a good job. They, they had, they had our, our support um, and they knew what the right things were due to, to get this job done. So I really appreciate those two. And of course, our general manager, our, our project managers, Ethan standing over here. Uh, and then we also had a senior project manager, his name is John. Uh, they're the behind the scenes guys. They're the ones to take care of contracts. I, I just want to say thanks to you guys as well. I appreciate all your support. And then of course, I want to thank all my coworkers. This has been a long project. In the last couple of weeks, I've been a little stressed out trying to, trying to get this thing to its finish line. So I, I appreciate all your guys' efforts and, and support. All A, B, and C shift out here. We run three shifts. You guys are phenomenal. Thank you for all the efforts there. Thank you for letting me take some of your time today. My name is Tabor Heisler. Uh, I am the White Mountain Firefighters Association Chapter Vice President. Um, and I'm also the uh, engineer paramedic here at Station 17 on A Shift. Today we celebrate the opening of a new station, giving the Linden community and the firefighters a station that is state-of-the-art, safer, and will improve response to the Linden community. Several years ago, three fire districts merged to form Timber Mesa Fire and Medical, all of which were represented by the White Mountain Firefighters Association. During that process, Station 17 was identified as a building that would require extensive repair or replacement. Today we stand at the new Station 17 and a tribute to the dedication of the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District Board and Administration to keep the community safe by providing firefighters with the most up-to-date facilities and equipment. The White Mountain Firefighters Association would like to extend their gratitude to the taxpayers for giving us such an outstanding facility to serve you with. To the fire board for serving in your elected positions, your initiative in researching fire service issues, and your dedication to safety and fiscal responsibility. To our administration, for all the hard work and effort they have put in to see the station built, from the flow path study, making sure firefighters get to the truck the most efficient way possible, turnout storage, making sure the fumes from our gear are not in the living space with us, reducing our cancer exposure, and for making sure the station was equipped with an exhaust removal system, among many other things. And to everyone mentioned above, for building meaningful relationships with your employees through the White Mountain Firefighters Association. We look forward to serving the Linden community, both now and through expanding services in the near future, including a community paramedicine program in which we will be able to provide home health care, treat and refer services, reducing emergency room admissions in partnership with Summit Healthcare. A new engine already ordered with four-wheel drive to improve response during all weather conditions and through an expanded certificate of necessity, which if granted, will give us an ambulance here at Station 17 to provide service to this community at a lower rate than currently offered and improve ambulance response by five minutes or more. The future of Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District Station 17, the Linden Station, is bright and the White Mountain Firefighters Association is happy to be a part of it. Thank you. Um, I would like to thank everybody that's been involved with this project from, you know, the citizens here in Linden, you know, supporting us and, and through everybody involved. It's been a really neat adventure for the district 
and it's gone smoothly. Um, and I'd also like to thank TK for doing the flagpole for us and, and getting that done. You know, scouting is a really big... <laughs> scouting is a really big organization that helps take young boys and make them men. And I know there's, I don't know how many of our fighter fire, or fire personnel have been in involved with scouting either as a boy or a leader, but if you have, can you raise your hand? Okay. Any of you Eagle Scouts? Okay. So some of the things that the Scouts learn, some of the um, character traits, being trustworthy, um, being kind, being helpful. These are things that we try to promote within the fire personnel within our district. And, and so there are things that the boys and scouts learn and they go on up and, and you can see it throughout different businesses and stuff. You know, those, those qualities, you know they learned them. And um, I'm glad that he was, that TK was part of this. And um, I'm glad that the community is here in support. And I hope through, the, with this project and other ones, whatever they may be down the road, that the unity within the Timber Mesa Fire District can can continue, that we all feel like we're all the same team. No matter what area of the district we live in, we're all the same and we're all there to support each other, no matter where we live within the district. And, um, and just thank you again for being here. Usually to uh, fill a fire bay like this with a lot of people, we had to get something going that everybody was mad at us. And that's usually when we could fill up the bay. I, I've been involved with uh, the Linden Fire Department for 28, 30 years, something like that. I think maybe the only one that's been here longer maybe is Merwin Fish, and I think Merwin is here today. Uh, I remember coming to this, this, this piece of ground back in the, uh, the middle 80s and coming to fire meetings and whatnot and walking through the front door and, and not be able to see the guys that were at the meeting because the cigarette smoke was so bad you couldn't see in here. Uh, but now, obviously, we won't have a problem with exhaust or anything. We got great ventilation. <laughs> So I guess if nothing else, this is a, a great thing to, to, to be involved with. I, I, uh, I lived in the Little Linden community for 35 years. I've been here a long time, not as long as a lot of other people. I've seen uh, our little bitty community go from just a few houses to subdivisions to, uh, to a lot more people. And with growth, comes more responsibility as we as members of this fire district uh, contemplate how we can uh, better serve the people of this area as the population has grown this will be a great asset to you uh, it, it's great to have a facility that stay the art uh, and can serve us I'm grateful that they have asked me to say just a couple words and for the for the many people that come here and and for your involvement in this community and in this area and the people that, that make it make it up. Thank you. So this is the, the front lobby of Timber Mesa Fire Station number 17. Uh, this will be the kind of the public area as customers come in. Uh, a lot of times walk-ins come into the station for blood pressure checks or, or some illness or whatever. So this is where we'll, we'll greet those guys. And we, we actually made an exam room uh, part of the fire station. Uh, through here so so we can bring people in right into this room right here do blood pressure checks treat whatever we need to treat uh, call for a transport if a transport's needed but that kind of gives us space where we can kind of have some privacy with that patient uh, of course just public area restroom uh, some sitting areas and such so that's kind of the front entrance we'll go ahead and go this way into our fitness room fitness is very important to our firefighters uh, cardiac arrest is, is one of the top killers of firefighters. 
And so our firefighters actually work out every day that they're on duty for at least an hour a day. Uh, so this is a fitness room, uh, a heavy focus on strength training and, and cardio to make sure they're physically fit to actually do the job. Uh, this door is locked right now and I don't have the key on me, but this is our communication room. Of course, we get dispatched out through Shola PD. They have a, an analog system through tones. Those tones will come into a station package and then it'll open up inside the fire station and all the dorm rooms, the kitchen, the bathrooms, everywhere the firefighters are out to alert them that there's a call for service at some point in the district. This is the, uh, the firefighter study or firefighter office. Um, anytime we go to a call, we have to do an incident report whether it's a fire incident or if we run to a medical call, we have to do an incident report and an EMS report. So we have computers in here uh, where those, those reports can be entered. And of course, education is very important to us too. So they can, they can work through uh, internet courses. Um, we have a whole training program that I think our firefighters get issued for, for, for login training at least, at least 40 hours per month that needs to be logged into a target solution system. So all that kind of takes place in this, in this area. This is our captain's office. So every station in Timber Mesa, there's a captain that's in charge of the station. Um, on Timber Mesa, we have A, B, and C shift. So there's three captains, but our crews work 48 hours on, 96 hours off. So there's only one captain here, and then he has his firefighters that, uh, that, that join him. The firefighters will do their work in here. The captain will do his work in here, of course. Of course, like I said, our firefighters work 48, 96. And so this is their dining and kitchen area. This station was built to house six people. Right now we only have house three people out here, so it has room for future growth. Um, but living here, they have a space where they can cook, they can buy their groceries, they can put all their dishes, clean their dishes. What do they need to do, do to live? I mean, they, they call fire stations fire houses kind of for a reason, because it's kind of where they live during their shifts. So this area is the, uh, the corridor where the firefighters' dorm rooms are. Uh, there's six individual dorm rooms and then two bathrooms and a clean laundry room. Hey guys. So each one of the dorm rooms um, is, is an individual space. Um, there's enough space for, for them to sleep. Um, inside, like I talked about with the communication room, we have the, uh, <clears throat> the tones, the packets that will open up. Right up above you, Mel, there's, there's a speaker. That's where the tones will come out and the LED lights on there will light up and it ramps up from zero to 10. So it starts very low and kind of gets higher. That way it's not such a jolt to our firefighters in the middle of the night when they're sleeping. But there's enough space in here, three shifts, they can put their extra clothes, somewhere if they have some homework they need to do and somewhere to sleep, just kind of basic area to, to kind of live in. And then of course, like I said, we got two, two uh, there's six dorm rooms and then two bathrooms for, for use. And then we have a clean laundry room this is where they can wash their uniforms. This is where we put all the, the consumables, toilet paper, paper towel, cleaning products, brooms, different things like that. So this is all the clean stuff. Um, and we can poke our head in, in all the rooms, but they're all the, they're all the same. So the idea in the station was from any point inside the station, everything flows back towards the apparatus bay. And that's very important to us. If we have to take a bunch of zigzags, there's a higher chance of the, the firefighters tripping over something, but it's also a delay. When we go to a call, there's NFPA, which is the National Fire Protection Association, has guidelines that we follow to, for response. When the call comes in, the dispatchers have so much time that can actually handle the call before they, before they send it out to us. Then from that time of call, for us to get on our trucks and go is actually 60 seconds is by the time we should be running down the road. If, if you have an emergency at your home, whether it's cardiac arrest or a structure fire, we need to get there as quickly as possible. Cardiac arrest, of course, we, you know, we're bringing our, our monitors, we're bringing some medication, and we need to get there and, and try to provide advanced life support as soon as possible. If it's a structure fire, then of course, uh, a fire can, in modern day construction, it's lightweight construction, it's the size of the fire can double every single minute. So response time is important to us. So designing the station to easy access to the apparatus bay, easy access to the truck was, was kind of key to that. And of course, make it safe so no one's tripping over stuff trying to get out. This room kind of has a funky name to it, but this is actually called the day room. That's kind of a fallacy. Um, this is probably the night room. It's really probably a better appropriate term for it. Our guys, when they come on to work eight o'clock in the morning, and they don't get off until 48 hours later. So at night, 
when when they're done doing all their target solutions, done doing all their physical training, done doing business inspections, working on their hydrants, this is where they can come and relax. Uh, the TV that's in here was actually purchased by the firefighters in this station. It wasn't a direct purchase from the from the district, uh, so we really appreciate that. But it's a large enough space that for the future we can actually put six chairs in here and uh, and accommodate the six guys that it's planned for. So again, flow pass. There's two exits coming right out into the apparatus bay that lead us right into the back of the fire truck. Now that's kind of important for a couple different reasons. It gives our firefighters a view of the truck. So if make sure all the cabinet doors are closed, make sure all the gears on the truck where it needs to be, they can get into the truck and they can go ahead and clean, clear, the, clear the bay. Now like I talked about during the, the, the kind of the speaking pieces of the, of the ceremony, as soon as that door opens, the exhaust fan kicks on and these, this ventilation system up here pumps in fresh air into the system. So we have a complete turnaround of air into this airspace to get the exhaust out. Now when it's freezing cold, we don't want to pump in 20 degree weather or 20, negative 20 degree weather into the bay so it actually gets tempered to come into the space so we're not having to try to overload our, our heater trying to warm it back up. So that's kind of a, a good thought process. So we can see here on the ground mill that we have floor drains in, the, in all three of the bays. Floor drains is, is, a, is a nice feature to have. Uh, cleanliness, like I already talked about, is important to us. So if we're on those nasty days where it's, where it's rainy or there's muddy roads or there's, there's just a snowy day kind of like it was this morning, um, we can bring our apparatus back inside, we can get them wiped down, we can get them cleaned down. That way we're looking good for the public when we respond to calls. This is a decon room, and it's not a decon room necessarily for, for if we have a hazmat call where we can come decon people into it, but it's kind of for our own purposes. If we go to, to some calls where there's just, there's just some, some lack of air, where it's just some nastiness that we're having to deal with, uh, we can come back to this space, we can park our apparatus outside, bring the equipment in here, we got stainless steel surfaces that are easily wiped down. We can clean this stuff. It doesn't hold on to, to any bacteria or anything like that. And we can clean up our stuff. And of course, we got the protective eye wash and different things like that. So that's kind of a, a nice feature. Our other stations don't necessarily have this yet, but our goal is to kind of redesign some of our other stuff to kind of accommodate this. But of course, when we go to a car accident, uh, we put people on backboards, we take them to the hospital, we put them on to the hospital bed. We can come back and we can put our backboards into these slots, grab our nozzle, put some disinfectant on it, clean them off, and, and it, then we can have them dry off and put them back on the truck so they're not contaminated to the next next customer that we're have to roll on. This room, uh, turnouts are very important to us. Um, this is what we wear going inside of a structure fire. Each set of tur turnouts, the pants, the jacket, they have liners inside of them. Uh, that, that can come out. This is uh, a vapor barrier, um, heat barrier, and then of course the resistance stuff on that side so that it doesn't break break down. This is what protects us when we go inside of a structure fire. This These turnouts do not like UV light. They don't like fluorescent light. So the, all the lights in the station are actually LED. Um, so they have their own room where we can keep these turnouts in and keep them protected. That way they keep us protected. But when we go to a, a structure fire, they're full of the air, the smoke inside of a structure fire is full of carcinogens. All the plastics, all the couches, everything that's burning in there wants to kill us. And so this is what keeps us protected. Well, it impregnates on here. We put them through extractors. We can clean them, but it doesn't necessarily get everything out. And so we give them their own room to go in. And you might, I don't know if you can get the sound or not, but there's a ventilation fan going on right now that's constantly ventilating the air out of this room. That way these are completely protected. Now, another reason we put it in space like this, not only to protect the turnouts, to protect our firefighters, but in, in, in years past, turnouts have been kept in the bay, in the apparatus bay. And of course, when you fire up your diesel truck, the diesel truck exhaust goes around in the bay, and then it sits and it wants to collect on the turnouts. So that's another reason why we keep them inside these locker rooms. Again, thank you for being here for the grand opening of, of Station 17 for the Linden community. Uh, for those of you who don't know me or I haven't had the pleasure of meeting, my name is Brian Savage. I'm the Fire Chief at Timber Mesa. And I want to begin today by echoing Chief Chevalier's sentiments about our, the team that's responsible for the construction of this facility. 
Uh, that team really begins, though, with Chief Chevalier, and if we could give him a round of applause. He has worked tirelessly. Again, he's worked tirelessly and, and dedicated countless hours to make certain that this facility was a success. Uh, his staff, uh, who I just recognized here in the last couple of days, all live in the Linden community. Uh, Kent McQuillan and Lori Jonas have also uh, been there with, with, with Randy throughout this whole project and uh, endured some of those more stressful weeks and stressful days, and we appreciate that. Our team also includes Navajo County's building department. I don't know if there's anyone here today from Navajo County, but thank you. Uh, our general contractors, as was mentioned, Core Construction, and our architect, Perlman. We truly appreciate the professionalism and the courtesy that they have shown us throughout this process, but more than that, their commitment to providing a quality public safety facility to the Linden community and to the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District. Thank you. The team also includes a long list of subcontractors that Randy talked about, and I won't belabor the point by repeating each one of them, but I will say that we truly value the relationships that we've developed and the support that we've enjoyed from so many of you in the community. We appreciate the work, especially that of the local contractors who have gone above and beyond to make this fire station a reality. This station is a result of more than three years of planning, budgeting, design, and construction, and this entire team has been instrumental throughout all phases of the project. So that I'm not remiss, I want to give all, all credit uh, to the citizens and the elected officials of the fire district. As was mentioned, Timber Mesa was formed in 2014 as the result of collaboration and the successful merger of the Lakeside, the Linden, and the Sholo fire districts. This, in, <clears throat> excuse me, this endeavor allowed this community to enjoy lower cost than any of the predecessor agencies, but of equal importance, is it has also allowed the, the district to have the financial wherewithal to improve facilities, equipment, training, and the level of service being provided throughout the community. This fire station is maybe the most tangible and certainly the most recent example of that success. That success is only possible, though, due to the cooperative efforts and regionalization. This community placed tremendous trust in the elected board members and certainly my staff to merge three districts and to create something new. I hope that our performance over time and the addition of this facility demonstrate that we are living up to your expectations. As was mentioned, again, we, we were merged three years ago, and the districts that preceded Timber Mesa, including the Linden Fire District, each had decades of history serving their respective communities. They were responsible for laying the foundations for fire and medical, fire and medical services in what is now the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District. If it were not for these districts and the dedication of their members, over those many years, we would not be where we are today in terms of a modern, professional fire and EMS agency. Chief Chevalier pointed out a few folks, and, and forgive me if I, if I repeat ourselves, uh, but in the audience today, we have former fire chief of the Linden Fire District, Marilyn Price. Thank you again, Marilyn, for all your contributions to this community. We also have former Fire Chief of the Linden Fire District and current board member for the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District, Ed Lindquist. Ed, thank you. And, and he just preceded me up here, but, but former board chairman of the Linden Fire District and current Timber Mesa board, board member, where do you go? Paul White, you're right in front of me. Paul, thank you. There are, there are several other special guests with us here today to celebrate the opening of our station. Certainly the local and elected, I'm sorry, the local elected and appointed officials from each of the communities served by Timber Mesa, including the town of Pine Top Lakeside, the city of Sholo, and from Navajo County. But in particular, I'd like to take time to recognize TK Plum again for his contribution as an Eagle Scout uh, with the erection of the flagpole out front and the monument dedicated to his grandfather, TK, where'd you go? Do I have that right? Your grandfather, Lowell Pierce. <clears throat> Thank you to TK and the whole Pierce family. Uh, again, they, they d donated this piece of land that this station sits on many years ago to the Linden Fire District, and we appreciate their contributions also to the Fire District as well as to Station 17. I'd also like to take a minute to, to recognize the Perkins family, 
As a local business and as a neighbor, the Perkins family has been instrumental in the building of this facility. They worked closely with us on design, supplied materials and labor, and assisted us in acquiring the nearly half acre to the rear of the facility that was necessary in order to be able to build again on this site. Without their help, this station would not have been able to have been built again here at this location. So again, if the Perkins family is here, thank you very much. Before I close, I'd like to thank our labor group. Uh, you heard from Tabor Heisler earlier, but the entire labor group has been so supportive throughout the process of creating this new organization and certainly the growing pains that go along with that. They've also been an important part of this project. Our crews have been assigned to, to serve the Linux community and have been helpful at every point throughout the process in which their participation was needed. They have been moved from one station into a temporary facility and then back into another station. They have assisted with various work projects, including the landscaping you, you see outside and moving in and setting up the station as you see it today. And they've done all this while continuing to respond to calls, keeping up with our daily training requirements, public education events, hydrant maintenance, building inspections, apparatus checks, physical training, and so forth and so on. These crews have really gone above and beyond during this process, and I truly appreciate their hard work and their perseverance throughout the construction phase of this project. Finally, when a new facility like this is open, there is often a monument or a plaque indicating the elected officials or the fire chief who, who was there at the time the facility was built or, and or dedicated. At Timber Mesa, this is not what we're about. We feel it's important to indicate our mission and our commitment to the community we serve. So here on this facility, you will not find a plaque with all of our names on it. Instead, I have the distinct privilege today to dedicate this fire station to the service of the Linden community and to the citizens of the Timber Mesa Fire and Medical District.